um, can refer to it later. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, everybody. Um, this is Shaza. Um, so privileged to be here with you guys um, as the ISLA uh, Executive Director, joined by board member Rasha al Hagan. Um, and inshallah, we'll have some other board members joining us as well. And so many other familiar faces and new faces and voices, alhamdulillah. We have Brother Wadud Hassan, who has graciously joined us to help us um, find that calm that I think that we're all kind of looking for. Um, it goes without saying that this is um, a very uncertain time, um, for some a scary time, um, and um, that we're all treading new waters. Um, many of you guys are part of the IECN, the Islamic Educators Communication Network that is operated by ISLA. And um, that might be how you heard about this um, webinar. We've been exchanging resources and communications, ideas, questions um, for several weeks now about um, the situation that's unraveling with COVID-19 and the impact that it has on our schools and families. Um, and if you're not part of it, I will put a, a link to the sign up in our chat box. So go ahead and find that chat box at the bottom. Um, it has always been an invaluable resource to learn from each other and um, in moments like these, we realize even more how much this community just means for all of us. Um, one of the things we realized as we were reading through the messages was that there's a lot of discussion about how to transition to distance learning, distance learning, e-learning, what's better, Zoom, Google Meet, um, Google Classroom, just different platforms. But um, what was, kind of an underlying um, tone in all of that was a sense of anxiety that a lot of um, principals, administrators, board members, and teachers are feeling. And so we wanted to have this kind of town hall meeting, a place where we can come together, um, share thoughts, questions, feelings, and inshallah in doing so, hopefully um, feel a sense of greater calm in particular, as many of us enter into our first week or maybe our second week of distance learning, some of us might be even three weeks in. Um, but, you know, just, just being able to come together. So I don't want to take too much time. Um, Sister Resha has a PowerPoint. She'll switch to sharing that screen um, just to help kind of guide us um, with our discussion. And she'll go ahead and uh, take the mic and go over some of the kind of just the norms that we're going to follow in today's town hall meeting or get together, if you will. Okay. Salaam alaikum. Thank you, Shaza. Salaam alaikum. Um, we, we definitely don't want to um, be spending the entire time talking. We want to spend a lot of time sharing. Um, so I have a simple agenda. I'm going to press my share screen button. And so what that might look for you is it might actually expand your screen and it might make it look like a full screen. You can certainly minimize that. Um, but I'll just share my screen with you right now and you'll see everything. I'll share up my, um, my desktop so you'll see that. Um, I don't know if everybody could see that right now. Um, we see it. Yeah, and I'm, so this is just to share again, I'm trying to minimize some things here. Sorry, you guys, see all my back and my stuff. Um, okay, so just inshallah to, we are here for inshallah an hour. I'm gonna stick to that. Our agenda is, we're gonna start with an opening dua and then um, our Zoom norms, mindfulness exercise that Brother Waldud will do for us. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm trying to also admit people at the same time from the, from the waiting room. Um, sorry, let me close that out. Um, uh, and then hopefully we'll do the, bu the bulk of what we're gonna do is sharing experiences. Um, and then we'll close with a, uh, with a mindfulness exercise and another dot inshallah. I am going to sh admit more people. I apologize again. Please bear with me. Um, so inshallah, um, I, I think what I'll do is I'll ask Brother um, Wadud, Brother Wadud, if you don't mind actually doing a um, both the dot and the mindfulness exercise just so that we can do that together and then I'll go into our Zoom norms. Does that sound okay? Yeah, that sounds good, inshallah. Okay. Sounds good. Bismillah. Salatu salam ala rasulullah. 
Bismillah, salatu salam rasulullah. So um, just want to reinforce arriving with each other for a minute. We talked about it at the retreat. Um, if you all remember, we talked about the three breath. Just taking the first breath, and as you're breathing in and breathing out, just relaxing your mind and settling your attention, gathering your attention on your, on your breath. So let's try that together. And um, we can then use the second breath for relaxing and calming our body. We carry a lot of emotions in our body. So um, all the anxieties and worries, everything we're hearing from different sides, the fear, they show up in our necks, in our shoulders, in our muscles, so just kind of relaxing our body. And um, as you continue to breathe, we ask, what's our intention now? How can we arrive here with each other now? So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to um, grant us tranquility in this time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us peace and tranquility in our heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give um, steadfastness and strength in our heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant strength and power to our heart and keep it focused um, in the highest and positive expectation um, in iman and in expectation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, um, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect all of us, our, uh, protect all of us and forgive all of our shortcomings, give us the fit to continue to return and repent and rectify. Um, come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala consistently, increasing our, our istighfar at this time. Mm -hmm. um, istighfar opens up many different um, types of um, ways and barakas and blessings and removes difficulties. So it's increasing our istighfar and um, continue to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to protect us, bless us, increase us in every way and get us through this stronger, inshallah, with um, iman. Um, patience and, and shukr and gratitude and good health. Um, I just want to do a short guided practice. Uh, for the guided practice, what I want you to do it is a time for, um, and, and I'm right there with you guys, um, feeling everything that we're all feeling together, right? So we're a community. Just because I'm leading this, it doesn't mean I'm better off at this than any of you. Um, I know that I am needing this um, a lot. So I want everybody to. Um, Get into a posture and try to see if you can get into this a few times a day um, for your formal vicar, but start with the breath. So um, starting with our posture, kind of lengthening our spine and feeling your hands on your thighs and your feet on the floor. If you're sitting in the, in, the, in the musalla, then you can be in a tahiyya position, that's fine too. But if you're sitting with your back supported or on a chair, then um, just lengthening our spine so that we're in an alert position. Lowering our gaze. And um, you can close your eyes or soften your gaze. And now we'll try out the meditation process. Um, Bismillah. And we will first start by connecting um, our intention, why we're doing this. We're calming our mind to ground ourselves and our attention, collect our attention to the present moment and in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So um, some of you might want to use these breathing exercise to learn to how to relate, you know, how to manage your stress. Some of you want to be more focused. Some of you want to be a more skillful leader. So just kind of fully arriving at the moment because our minds are going so many different directions and there are so many different thoughts that are passing through. So um, for this, I, I again ask everyone to lower your gaze and try to be in this exercise as much as, as much as you can. Now bring your attention to your breath. You may notice a movement of the abdomen or the chest or the sensation of air passing at the tip of the nose, or a sensation in the throat, or a sense of the whole body breathing. 
wherever the sensation of breathing most vivid for you, allowing your attention to rest there. If it helps, you can also place your hand on your chest, on your abs, on your nostrils, wherever your breath is most alive for you. For the rest of the practice, think of this sensation as your anchor point, your anchor breath. Whenever your mind wanders to worries, thoughts, anything else, just bring it back and see if you can stay with the breath. Breathing in. Breathing out. You may explore counting each excel from one to 10. And if you notice your mind wonder, then bring it back to counting again, one through 10. Can you be curious and kind with yourself? Even as you bring your attention back to your breath, just be kind to your heart that we're all feeling this together. We're all going through this difficulty together. We all have this distraction, the fear, the anxious thoughts. We're all struggling to find calmness of mind. The attention wanders. As soon as you notice, just simply return to this awareness of the breath. Gently and kindly, just be kind to yourself. And see if you can bring the presence of Allah in your heart. In this moment, as you're breathing in and breathing out, and this breath is a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is here with us. Imam Ibn Atallah al-Isqandari mentioned that it is our short-sightedness when during difficulty we think that Allah's mercy has left us. It is our short-sightedness to think that Allah's kindness has left us. As you breathe and collect and gather your attention, in your heart, try to see if you can feel the presence of Allah and his gentleness and kindness. Breathing in and breathing out. Knowing that Allah's gentleness and kindness and mercy surrounds us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is here with us. Thoughts coming, thoughts going. <coughs> no need to push away or chase after. If attention wanders, just simply returning to your breath. See if you can add a little bit of liquor to it, just say astaghfirullah in your heart. We're returning to Allah. Astaghfirullah Rabbi in collegium they want to like returning to the presence of Allah. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Gathering our attention on the breath. And in our heart, in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and staying for the next 30 seconds with the care of Allah. See if you can visualize Allah's kindness and mercy. Allah says that Allah's mercy surrounds all things. Allah, we ask you by your mercy that surrounds all things that you forgive us. Allah surrounds us with his mercy. We visualize the warmth of Allah's mercy with us. Make 
before we end this exercise, let's come back to our breath. Breathing in, breathing out. See where the breath is most alive. Sometimes when we are distracted or stressed, we forget to breathe. Even teaching kids to breathe all the way to the stomach, whole belly breathing. Taking a deep breath, letting it out, and staying with your breath. Opening our eyes and welcoming everyone back with each other. And, and, yeah, we just can't emphasize enough the importance of um, this practice because at this time we really have to calm our mind and uh, one of the tools that Allah has given us is our, our breath and then using that to transitioning the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. thank you. Jazakallah khairan, Brother Wadud. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and share my screen again with everybody um, so that they could see um, what we are going to be doing next, inshallah. Um, um, so as far as some Zoom norms, um, just this is, these are really good when you have a large number of people um, working or, or, or sharing Zoom. Um, if, unless you're, if you're not speaking, I'm going to ask that everybody has their mics on mute. Um, it'd be great if we could see everybody, but of course we understand that some of you may not or, can't, or don't feel comfortable using your video. Um, if there is, um, I don't know if you guys can see or not, but there is a chat uh, capability on your, um, on, your uh, on, on Zoom. So if you have a question or would like to introduce yourselves, we definitely encourage you to use the chat feature. Um, if you are to speak, uh, there is actually a raise your hand um, feature. Uh, Shaza, you, as, a, as, a, as an admin, I actually can't do it. Um, are you able to do it? Can you tell us how, how you did it when you raised your hand? All right. Um, yeah, so basically where you see the participants on the um, bottom panel of your screen, you see the microphone where you can mute or unmute yourself. You can start or stop your video. You can invite people. And then there's the, that little icon that shows you how many participants are here. So if you click on that, um, you have the button on the left that says mute me, and then you have the button on the right that says raise my hand, raise hand. So when I click it, you can see on that participant screen that I'm raising my hand. Azra is raising her hand. Great, great job. You guys want to take, um, just practice that. That's cool. All right, let me uh, okay. uh, Elizabeth, Manal, awesome. So basically, when you're going to want to say something, so now we can lower our hands. <laughs> <laughs> and then as a, as a host, I, so I can also lower your hand for you. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. But you can see, um, Resha, you can see when they're raising their hand, yep, right? Yep, yep. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, because I'm the host, I'm not able to show everybody how to do that. So Okay, um, so, so that's how we do it, and that's how we'll take a look and see who wants to speak. Yep. Go ahead, Resha, with, continue with this. Thank Zoom. you. Thank you, Shaza. Um, and then just because we do have right now 30, 29 participants, woohoo, that's awesome. We want to make sure that we allow for everybody to speak, so try not to speak above a minute or two, inshallah. Um, the goals for today are very simple. Um, we, we really want you to, we want to create a mindset that, inshallah, فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى that comes from Shah. Verily, with hardship comes ease. So as we are in hardship with this plague and this disease that is around us, we want to together recognize the ease that Allah has given us. And that's kind of what we want to try to do, that in this network, in this group that we have together, that that, inshallah, is an ease through this hardship. Um, and so in saying that, we really have two goals for today to share ideas on how to raise morale and increase your, our patience. Um, Omar Sulaiman had this wonderful video that he, that he talked about how uh, a plague can be a punishment, but it can also be a blessing if we can, um, if we can be patient through it. 
And so we want to share ideas on how you as educators um, are raising morale, whether it's for your students or for your teachers um, or for your school in general and how we increase our patience. Um, and then we're gonna, we wanna look, ISTA wants to look for ways to create a network of support around you. So based on your questions and, and the things that come out today, um, we're hoping to be able to create um, several of these sessions so that if there's a question around finances, if there's a question around um, you know, e-learning, whatever it may be, we're really hoping that we, could, um, that we can um, create a network around, uh, around us uh, to support us. Um, so having said that, I have some questions to start off the, the kind of the discussion. And please feel free to raise your hand and just speak. Um, how do you as a shepherd stay positive for those, that, for those you heard? So how are you in whatever position you're in um, are staying positive that would encourage others to stay positive as well, uh, different ideas? Um, and what support, and then after that, we'll, we'll go into the next question is what supports my Islamic schools need. Um, so having said that, I would love to hear from people on how are you staying positive? What are some things you're doing in your school that we might get ideas for to stay positive um, in this, um, in this uh, crisis situation? Whenever anybody wants to speak, you're more than welcome. Okay. To this is Seema. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. I think it's important, um, maybe first and foremost, for all of us to be in communication. So communicate more than we did before. Communicate in different ways because we used to see one another. I'm a principal of a Sunday school as well as a professor and teacher of teachers. And my student teachers, you know, all from the public sector are, are just as concerned and worried and need just as much support as my Sunday school kids do. And so I think communication. Jazakallah khair. And Khadija, I see your hand. Uh, please feel free to speak. Sister Khadija? I'm so sorry. I was trying to remember how to unmute. Yes. Uh, so welcome everybody. <laughs> this is new to me. I'm a principal of a school and I'm still, this is all new to me. Um, so I agree with the sister that also I had my first meeting with my elementary teachers. I'm a principal and we go from three years old to eighth grade. And so I had to divide all my teachers into groups. So I did my elementary grade one to five today and we spoke for like an hour and a half. And um, it's uh, what came out was it's important for me to keep in touch with them, to communicate with them because they're not used to teaching and not being going to school every day and seeing other people. So they, they want support and also the students uh, need support. They need to do a live uh, connection with the students. Anybody else want to share? Please feel free to just share. Well, uh, assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, I am an elementary student, like teacher, and of course, like the elementary kids, they are very young for uh, life, like meeting. So it's very hard for them. But uh, actually, I made like a small or a short meeting for them. At least they can see each other, talk with each other, because they miss their friend and they're all locked inside the house so it's just very short meeting but we discussed something like related to teaching like i was t uh, teaching them how to read from the quran a short lesson but the most important thing i want them to feel like they are with each other still and they can see each other and that was very very good uh, experience even though they were very young like first and second grade but it was good for them to see each other during this like uh, period. Jazakum Allah khair. You know, this is not about school. I would add something that I did just before this actually. I came here late because we had a family Kahoot. So Kahoot is a teaching tool. And a teacher can put all those questions up, you know. Um, but as a family, all 25 members have not seen one another since, you know, before the state of Illinois required the quarantine, we were quarantining ourselves just for safety. 
So we all did a Kahoot. We had 20 out of the, or 21 out of the 25 or so of us. All the kids, all ages, and we had a good laugh, a lot of fun. Uh, and so sometimes we might think that, you know, the kids don't know how to use something, but somebody there can probably set up, you know, a screen to watch. And the interaction that we had was very uplifting was much better than talking one-on-one, -on -one, I thought, to all of them. So I realized that for my Sunday school kids, um, I think they just need time to socialize. So I might bring them on the screen, you know, like what the sister just said, you know, that they're all talking. So that's, you know, it's uplifting. I think that going back to my thing about communication, um, People don't know what others are thinking and everybody's worried. And so having a good time together takes everyone's mind off of that. So that's what we did. Well, actually yesterday we had a meeting as a family, as you said, uh, through Zoom. So it was fun also because we, we were planning to meet each other uh, in the ISNA like forum, but now they canceled the ISNA forum. So I said, okay, why don't we have a meeting like through Zoom? So it was fun also, as you said, alhamdulillah. Sister Elizabeth, I see your hands up, so I will um, call on you to go ahead and speak. Sure. So last week, our school, our students normally partner with a virtual school, so we provide the Arabic, Quran, Islamic studies. So we were already set up that all the students had Zoom room, but all our students have a homeroom teacher. So last week, that cyber school shut down also, which is ironic because they were already set up. So we all had to end up almost becoming an online teacher, which we did. So I was very apprehensive. So I took the kindergartners in first grade. And every day we would go over some writing lessons, different things like that, reading. We did some Wilson work. But at the end of the day, at 2 o'clock, in my mind, I was going to do math with them. But we sort of had a story time. And at the end of the day, one of the students said she wanted to share and I was like okay <laughs> so she wanted to share something from her house and when I realized that's what these kids needed was this time to share so I almost had to pause so we do one hour of like secular academics in the morning they do an hour Quran Arabic and then they have another half hour Islamic studies and then in the afternoon that two o'clock time is just going to be our story time and our share because I realized that's what the kids needed that was most important and they were excited to share so I think and for anybody who's doing it on Zoom, even the younger kids, if you do a read aloud with them and just give them a chance to share, they want to share and they want to chat with each other. So, it's, you know, you just get used to it. But I think that was the best thing. So it was great for them. And actually, it was even great for myself, just a normalcy. Because instead of focusing on all the updates, closures, whatever, I'm focusing on them and seeing what they're sharing with me. And I think Sister Afifa one day must have posted something on social media that's not about all the work all the stuff and I think sometimes even like in being in charge you feel the pressure like okay is do we have enough math time science this that the other but this isn't that time it's just time to let us be human and I know that we have sister Afifa on um, thank you so much for everybody for joining sister Afifa if you want to chime in uh, with how you have shared with your staff um, how to, you know, take care of your flock. I think that, you know, what you mentioned, Sister Elizabeth, is really interesting and kind of makes me excited about um, the, the change that we're going through that, like, maybe we'll actually get to know our students better on a more personal level because um, we get to see that they're talking to us from their home and they get to share that stuff with us um you know sometimes unplanned in our daily lessons so that's exciting i see some questions right here um in the chat as well and sister fifa if um, you're on and you hear this feel free to unmute and chime in as well and, and anyone um so IACC Sunday school principal is saying we need to stay mindfully aware with ourselves and increase our connection with Allah. Um, so I think that this is like taking care of ourselves and empathize with others. The next step is to meet with each other virtually. We need to train our staff and teachers and parents with anything they may need help with. Um, and then she says, is there a particular age group where Zoom meets are not fruitful? That's a really good question. 
Anyone have any insights onto that? Anybody mm -hmm. tried it? I, I use Zoom quite a bit, and, and we use it in the virtual, in the online high school. And they're middle schoolers, but in being in their homes gives us a lot of insight to what happens in their homes. So the very young children can really disturb, you know, a middle schooler trying to be in a, you know, a live classroom setting with a live teacher. So I think that it depends. Uh, the age, how young can you go with Zoom, depends on what's happening in the home. Who the adult is, who's managing the whole process, you know. Um, all that matters if it's well managed then any age because we had a three-year-old on today in our family kahoot we had kahoot and we were on zoom at the same time so we could see one another we were laughing one of the kids called out all the answers so i did a really good job of one game you know because they were talking but that talk was healthy so all ages can manage if the family can manage um Assalamu alaikum. Uh, this is Abdul Wahab. I'm the principal of the International Leadership School of Fulton, Indiana. And um, I just want to add one more thing um, that I think is pretty important. Um, in the hardship that our students going through, our job becomes harder and our mission becomes very important that we need to focus not just in academic point of view with the students or to make sure like they are. Uh, getting the proper um, uh, education. Now we play in a role of doctors too. We need to look be after their emotions. I have a friend who is, um, she is actually a, a psychologist and she has a PhD degree in that, uh, in that field. She said for her first time, she's been working in that field for eight years, for her first time to hear this uh, middle schoolers thinking about harming themselves of fear of the of coronavirus so our job how to um, comfort our kids how to make them like uh, one of the sisters she mentioned how to have them say their stories how to share their yeah they can focus in their academic um part of the school but our job it becomes not just to become educator only but becomes as um social workers as uh, we need to cover more than what we used to work, uh, to work or to focus on. So our job is very important now. How can we build a trust? As Muslims, we know as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an adult, we know that um, nothing can harm us except if Allah, you know, uh, 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 allow it to. But now the kids, they need in a way, uh, in a point of view from an education point of view, how can we, um, give them to understand that concept as Muslims and how to make them feel comfort and not to be afraid of what's going on. Yeah, keeping them busy, it's a good thing, but we have to feed them in their hearts how to become, you know, um, uh, uh, my name is Rosina. I'm not an administrator, but uh, I'm a doctoral student in curriculum and teaching at Columbia. And that's an excellent point. I think things like art and poetry and, um, you know, and even stories of the, the prophets and stories in our, in our tradition of people who have gone through hardships could be really helpful to do with, with students. Um, so even things like the wakul, right? What does that mean? What, it, what that looks like? And stories about it. Um, and talking about things like patience and things like forbearance. I think those kinds of things could be really helpful. For students at this time. Thank you so much for sharing. Sister Zubaydah, I see your hand up. Please feel free to share. Asalaamu Alaikum everyone. Um, it's amazing that we're all together and discussing there's so many issues and as I'm listening to everyone I feel like there is which which aspect of which point do I elaborate or touch on but going back to your being positive during these difficult times I think um, you know, all the points are well taken, Every, everybody is right on, but for me, I feel like normalcy, just the routine for them is essential because that's where their comfort zone is. I feel, you know, um, I teach middle school in Minaret Academy and um, I teach language arts and I do feel that what I've experienced for the four days that I've done Zoom lessons with my students 
Uh, they love to see my face, so I do make myself uh, appear as well. And then just the normal normalcy, the routine of this is what we're doing from this and this time to this and this time, and the structure. So that's, I feel, has created some kind of a positive um, ambiance, I don't know, in, in, the, in, in their households as well. But just the fact that having everybody on board, the parents, I mean, I know we need to give them the social and the psychological um, comfort and support, but it all comes from everybody's contribution. The parents have to take a major role on this, uh, very much so. So I feel we re really need to reach out to our parents just as much as we re need to reach out to our students. Um, but great point said. Um, I know I've given some assignments where they want to express themselves. So poetry and writing has definitely been a good way for them to express. The first day we did a general journal prompt, and I think they like that. Just what are your thoughts about what's going on in our world today? Um, but I'm, I'm struggling as well with Zoom because how do I hold them accountable for their work? But normalcy is definitely what's working for me. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Zubaydah. Um, Sister welcome. Azra and then Sister Patricia, I see your hands up. So Sister Azra, go ahead. Hi, Salaam alaikum everyone. I hope you guys can hear me and I hope you guys are hanging in tight. Um, and so we were, I'm, I'm an assistant principal for a weekend school. We have close to 125 students here in New Jersey. We were scheduled to go online today, but unfortunately we had to postpone it until next Sunday because we ran into some technical issues and then just trying to get all the teachers on board and having them, um, we didn't get enough notice. Like one day we were having a regular Sunday and just two days later we were shut down. All the schools were shut down. So we didn't have even have training time. So what Whatever training time we have been doing and professional development we've been doing has has been through video conferencing uh, and it's been really hard to train especially the old um, fashion teachers that are you know used to their own routine and their own um, formats to to be able to train them so we ran into some issues uh, first let me address your question sister Shaz um, Shaza and um, uh, Sister Rasha asked, um, we, we're, we're setting up this uh, anonymous Google form that's going out to the teachers and to the students where they get to put in their thoughts or compliment each other and send it back to us that we share um, what, if it's coming from the students, uh, we're putting it on a, a master um, a Google form that we have that's going out to the whole academy, including the parents, students, and the teachers, just words of confidence, words of support, or whatever they would like to share. And mostly we, we try to, we ask them to focus on the positive aspect and uh, just, just words of wisdom or words of support to each other. So that's one thing that we're doing. Another thing that I would like to get um, more input from you guys, since you guys are more of experts uh, when it comes to Zoom or Google Classroom. Uh, the thing that we ran into was the COPPA uh, policies. Um, I know Sister Afifa is here too. Maybe she can shed some light. Sister Seema is here. The Children Online Privacy Protection Act. Now, we had to consult with our insurance and our, our attorneys on this, that the minors, um, we had to turn off a lot of settings on Zoom when because there's minors involved we had to make sure that the teach we had to create this big umbrella account um, for our school then have the teachers become members of it instead of them initiating their own member accounts and um, their own meetings uh, just so that we can check their settings and uh, all their recordings had to be turned off down to even closed captioning that's what our lawyers advise so i wonder if you guys have any input into that uh, that's what we're dealing with now um, uh, because there's minors involved and there is going to be a lot of video conferencing going on back and forth. So I wonder if any, anybody can shed some light on it. Uh, it's something interesting that came up, like even my new things and um, something uh, the sister just mentioned about how to get um, kids accountable. Uh, we have something called attention tracking that I'm sure Sister Rasha can mention. It's one of the settings where you can make sure that the kids who are online logged in um, track their attention that way. Um, so there's a bunch of features, uh, you know, we're trying to get used to all the technicalities when it comes to Zoom, but I would love to hear what other people have to say about this, um, you know, the Protection Act that we need to watch out for. Thank you. Does anyone want to answer that question? Please don't hesitate. I'm not an expert. I'm just someone that came to the meeting. Um, well, there are so many things that could <clears throat> could be in effect here. 
if someone is recording a meeting mm -hmm. as we are recording this meeting and then we have children in the meeting and then someone shares that recording without parents knowing it their children could have been talking to one another you know doing almost anything acting silly on the screen some of my experiences have been that uh, i can actually turn myself upside down right now while the teacher's talking and then i can spin myself and then i can do one of these like ah, <laughs> all out of the picture with or without sound you know my teacher can mute me all those things so i could do something foolish and then it was recorded and so where is that video being sent is you know a big issue it's not so much a big issue that somebody gets it um you know from somewhere because it's pretty secure unless someone gets the video like if you made the videos available let's say you said okay we had this fourth grade science you know class on thursday and khadija you missed it so now here's the link you watch it now khadija could have been totally entertained by something that happened so she wants to send it to her cousin in another state look at this link look at what these silly kids are doing so then these children whose parents don't know they're being you know sent around wherever this would become an issue so being careful about where the video is stored and by whom and and when you allow use for it um and there are ways to get around it you can make links only good for a little while so watch this video um you can also have a lot of parent sign-offs so we decide we're going to have parents responsible for their children and parents are going to sign off that their children can participate this and that and they're taking the liability not the school um so that's a possibility and I think there are going to be things that we need to um, make sure that our sign off is a legal form mm -hmm. too, and that everybody signs it. And if you forget, uh, like if you share a video, if you have a video and you want to take a child's actual identity out of it, it's very easy to use blurring software. So you could take all the faces out of something that you wanted to share by just touching with this tool to blur the face lots of possibilities I just touched you know randomly on a few of them yeah and this it's a really good question um, and I think that it does deserve um, some attention I wonder as if you could post that on the IECN yes. so um, that we could have... let me mention one other thing according to our attorneys and the insurance company we were also advised to maintain students privacy to turn off not just the video to have all the members all the staff turn off private chats auto saving chats nonverbal feedback and saving captions it was very serious it was getting down to the nitty-gritty of it so yeah. I, I know we're, we're you know because we quickly are um transforming our distance learning system all the islamic schools but they're overlooking these little, little minute things that are that may be very important sister seema mentioned to have this uh, parent sign off so we're developing a document for the parents to sign off but nonetheless there's these minute features and things that need to be addressed you know yeah and, but, and but if you feel that this is really educational then you can also make sure that you don't share it anywhere without blurring faces i'm going to um just because uh, i, I want to make sure that we we kind of allow for other voices to speak i know that sister patricia has had her hand up so i want to make sure i, I give her some time as well um i i do i, I sister azra if you're able to put that on the IUC, iucn and i, I know shaza is also taking notes so that that could be a topic for one of the one of the uh, future sessions that we do, inshallah. Um, Sister Patricia, um, I see your hand up and I wanna allow you to speak, please. Assalamualaikum, everyone. Waalaikumsalam. Yeah, thank you, for, uh, thank you for joining us. This is wonderful to see all our educators uh, in, in one place chatting about a very serious, serious issue. What I wanted to add, uh, going back to how do, you, uh, how do you keep things positive, what I wanted to add to that um, was back to having, um, helping our students to see, even though this may be happening, with this, to be grateful for what you have. You may not be able to be with your classmates uh, face to face, but 
you're able to be with your classmates in a Zoom chat or in a, in a room uh, communicate with your classmates. And um, there are many, many other things that we point out to our students um, and our parents, helping our parents to also keep feeling positive by being grateful for what we have. And I just wanted to add that to, to that. And I'm not, a, I didn't ex introduce myself. I am not a teacher anymore. I'm not in the classroom anymore. I'm retired, but um, I have a strong, strong interest in education and I work with student teachers as well. So it's been, it's been, it's been really uh, scary uh, for all of us, but it's, but it's also a very positive thing. It gives us an opportunity to stop and relax, maybe not relax, but stop and take pause and, and, and look at where we're going and, and look at some of the changes that are going to be happening in our lives and, and positive changes as well. So this is, this is, um, this is not all bad. There's some, there's some very things coming, some changes that we're making in our lives that inshallah will be um, permanent and beneficial to us. Absolutely. Jazakallah khair and Sister Patricia. Anybody else want to share? Maybe, um, um, maybe we want to share not only, I mean, not only just positives, but what questions we might have. Um, um, you know, I know that this process comes with a lot of anxiety. Um, and as someone who um, is, you know, is in charge of teachers, I'm, I'm an academic dean. So as somebody who's in charge of teachers, um, it was really important for me to make sure that they were in a healthy mindset, right? So that they could take care of their students, so that the students are in a healthy mindset. Um, so, you know, we, you know, I, I would say communication, but so like when I talk about communication, I'll give you like a very, you know, we, as, as I meet with my department heads, I make sure I'm meeting with them at least once a week. That first week we, we, we did virtual learning last week. We just finished our first week of virtual learning. I met with them twice and just checking in. Um, and then we did a little trivia game. Uh, we did, we took a picture of our Zoom, just like you guys are here, you can like take a picture of that. And we sent it to parents and we put it on our newsletter. Um, and then other teachers started sending pictures of them on their Zoom with, um, on our newsletter. And we do have, a, we do have a permission slip and all that for, for our students. Um, it's just that that connection is so very important. So, you know, one of the things you really need to make sure you're doing is, is taking care of the teachers so that the teachers can take care of, of the students. Um, and I would love to hear more about that and more, more questions that you guys might have as well as we are going into uh, 11 more minutes left. I see Sister Rosina, your hand is up, so I will call on you. Yeah, I figured out how to do that, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Um, yeah, yeah, the thing about uh, staying positive, I think also kind of being comfortable with being vulnerable and accepting that it's hard for everyone. And we're kind of in this together and we're figuring this out together and kind of not being afraid of being sad and the hardships that our, our teachers and our students might be going through. Um, and kind of being okay with talking about it. You know. Absolutely. Khairan. Yes, Sister Afifa and then Sister Manal Shalabi. I forgot how to put my virtual hand up. So I'm just That's gonna... okay. We can see a hand up too, <laughs> non-virtual, old fashion way. <laughs> yeah. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Uh, so nice to, to be connected in, in virtual land. Alhamdulillah. Um, I, yeah, I just wanted to share just in terms of partly communication, partly just um, helping each other out. Uh, we had our school community meeting for all the students on Wednesday of last, uh, last week. It's not getting all blurry, but the last day we were in school was Wednesday. We had a community meeting, so we had all the students together. Things were just starting to get a little bit, um, you know, more in the news and so on out here in Virginia, outside of Washington, D.C. But our community meeting, our theme of this month for March is perseverance and summer. So it was all about, you know, what do we, what does that look like? We gave examples of it as we usually do, but then we spent a lot of time with um, talking about what is Corona. Oh, actually, I said, what is, why is it called Corona? That was the name of the discussion. So we talked about how Corona means crown and the, look, you know, looking at the actual um, microscopic image of the virus, it looks like a crown because it has, you know, so on and so forth. We went into what does it mean? And this was for students from K kindergarten to eighth grade. 
and we talked about it together. Um, and then as we started to get into um, having to close down and we were trying to figure out what, when to do it and so on, we realized that we had to do it that week. Um, but we, and the board was saying, you know, let's just do it, that, today's the last day, that's it, no more. So we lobbied, we said, let's just have one more day. And so we had Thursday all together. And we spent the whole day Thursday just going class to class, talking to students, having them ask questions and so on, and talking about, we're gonna see you, we're gonna see you online, we're gonna see you online, inshallah. So it was partly, I mean, I don't, you know, how many of us have that opportunity right now because we're all in the middle of it or getting into it. But, um, but it was also just to kind of set them up in the mood of, you know, we'll see you, see you later. We're just like we say, see you tomorrow, inshallah. We say, we'll see you online, inshallah. And getting them to understand that this is something we're going to do. Um, then since then, what we realized was very important with the communication piece was definitely almost every day we've had an update sent home. And a lot of it is logistics and so on, getting us all on board. Uh, but then we had uh, last week, uh, we, well, so we made a calendar. So every day we had something coming from different, different parts of the school. Uh, admin and then board and then we had the counselor send their email we had PE send their email uh, art sent their email so each department sent an email we had a schedule so that it wasn't also too many things so we have to keep cognizant of how much we're sending out to parents so that was paced as well what I'm really especially happy about is that we had our we called it our community meeting for parents so we had that last week and we set it up so we had so we had two sessions of the day because again, uh, parent, feedback is parents are overwhelmed and so on. They don't, they can't keep track of everything. So we had two sessions and people could log in via Zoom. Zoom has a limit of a hundred. So we knew that we would not be getting everybody, but between the two, we had a hundred in the morning. We had about um, almost uh, 60, 70 people in the afternoon. So we had pretty full sessions. And it was great because then we're able to say, we're gonna do this on a regular basis. We'll be having Zoom sessions with you as parents um, and all the office hours that teachers have are on Zoom. So they have, they've posted their office hours. So as much as possible, just trying to get people to um, know that we're, we're here and we're ready to talk and so on. So as they start their Zoom meetings and they start their online instruction, they know what it looks like. There is some hand holding and we were, sort of surprised because we live in a very high tech area. All of, most of our parents are in some form or the fashion part of the tech industry, but they don't know how to operate, you know, a single, <laughs> a simple uh, Zoom session. So it's interesting that we had to walk them through it. Um, in any case, I would just getting, that was kind of the logistics and sort of the time frame, and also some ideas about how we're reaching out to parents. But I think also uh, what we realized is as a school, we need, we do need to take a leadership position and sort of you know, put it down, uh, put, put down the law, which is to say we, had, we were hearing about parents saying, you know, what are we gonna do? We have to, have to homeschool, I have to you know, put, make a schedule, my kids aren't getting anything, et cetera, et cetera. So I, you know, we, we sent out emails, we sent out in the, in the uh, community meeting as well, saying exactly you know, what a lot of us have been saying, which is just take a breath, <laughs> stop, and understand that there's not a crisis right now for your child. Um, because they wanted, I mean, not, I mean, again, we have such a diversity of parents. Some people thinking that if they don't quickly have something in place, then all will be lost and my child will be so back, um, so far back. So this was a crucial point to make, which was we said to parents, every single school right now in the United States is in the same position. Um, that's just a fact. And because of that, you don't, you're not gonna feel like your child's gonna be behind somebody else and, and all of that. So this part of, part of the conversation has to be kind of calming them down and saying, you know, Bismillah, let's just take a breath. But the other part of it is giving them some real, you know, understanding of the situation, which is, it's okay. It's not, your child is not gonna be behind everybody. Standardized testing, that was a big issue. What, what's gonna happen with that? Like everybody in the country is in the same boat. In the so, world, actually. And, and, you know, we know that the secretary has now said that that's, it's not going to be required. So getting them to understand that we are, you know, it's not just our school, it's not just our, uh, you know, county, et cetera, et cetera. Has, I think it's helped a lot because they didn't, they know it, but they didn't realize it per se. That's been helpful um, besides the other kind of calming effects. Um, and I think, you know, in terms of what we've done for wellness, you know, we have, we've had two counselors, we have wellness program, which is a mental health program we've developed at the school. It's been in place, so it's just kind of kicking in a little bit more. 
We do have one-on-one -on -one sessions with uh, set up for students to continue their counseling through counselors at, uh, at school. Um, we're doing regular check-ins with the teachers. So we've just put it on the calendar, just like we have a staff meeting every Friday. We now have a check-in every Friday, but we have it otherwise as well. And like Russia was um, suggesting with smaller groups as well. Um, so it has, you know, we kind of just have to put everything on a calendar and make it happen and then say there'll be things off the calendar as well that will have to happen. But I just wanted to emphasize that piece, which is just go ahead and, t you know, take the, take the permission if you need it as a school or as an educator to say, we, we know this, we got this as educators. And we're telling you as parents, not just trust us because there you know, shouldn't be blind trust, but here, here's what we're, we're talking about. Here's why it's important that your child does not sit at a computer. Here's why it's important that your child building a fort outside is going to be just as important as something else. Um, so I want us to feel confident in that. Um, I know and I hope you know, we'll have separate conversations about well, what does it look like if people start to, people are concerned about online learning and then they, you know, we're, we're worried that we're not going to be able to pay our staff because people might uh, withdraw and so on. That's a whole conversation we can have. But I do want us to feel confident with uh, our communities to be able to say, as educators, we want to advise you that teaching and learning will happen, but here's how you can facilitate that. Um, and I think parents need that. They need to hear that from people that are in education. And we should be able to feel confident relaying that to them uh, and not feel like, you know, they're just parents that are um, and, and, and following their lead, because that's also been happening. Some parents, we have different parents, right? So, but some parents will say, I need to hear more. There should be more coming. Why isn't there more happening? And then we have other parents that are trying to replicate, you know, morning meeting with their, with their classmates and so on and so forth. And I just had to pull them back and say, just wait, here's what's coming. In the meantime, on the other end of it, we have, you know, a whole bunch of meetings continuously with teachers to make sure that they are on, on target but also to give them any support. So we can't just, you know, let things kind of pull themselves together. But at the, at the very least, in terms of an outward looking, I think we need to help parents understand that um, we, ha we know what we're doing, alhamdulillah, you know, with the best of humility, but also with confidence, and then relay that in a way that they also can, um, can understand it. So I'm sorry, I'll stop there. Jazakallah khair and Sister Afifa. I'm, I'm very cognizant of the time and I want to res be respectful of everybody's time. Um, and so um, I know that Sister Manal has her hand up and I, Sister Manal, I'll ask you to, inshallah, share your, your thoughts, um, hopefully within a minute. But in the meantime, one of the main reasons why we wanted to have this is so we can put all of us together and make us feel connected. We're all across the United States of America. We wanted us to feel connected, inshallah, and this is a first step. But one of the things we're really looking forward to doing is to have more of these sessions, but we want to know what your questions are. So as Sister Manal is speaking, I would love for you to share your questions, even your anxieties, if there are mm -hmm. any, that we can perhaps set some sessions around in the future. So please go ahead and, and do that in the chat feature while Sister Manal speaks. Uh, go ahead, Sister Manal. Yeah, Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, so actually, we are in Canada, so we're not Wonderful. We're again in the same boat. Um, so I want, from the positive side, I want quickly to mention something related to the, um, what uh, our sister just mentioned about the wellness program. We have a counselor in, on board and uh, she's ready to deal with any student or any parent who think they are panicking or they have special problems. Um, uh, I have, I'm teaching, one of the classes I teach is all girls, they're grade eight, they're so much excited to meet uh privately not wearing the uniform they're asking can we have uh, can we meet unveiled can you not put your hijab on and they're this like they're so so much excited we will start our first lesson tomorrow and they're so excited about it um concerning the 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 contract with parents i just want to mention that uh, we need also from the other side we know we need to include some behavioral issues that some students would be dealing with like um, if they um take pictures of the teacher or they do filters things of that uh, sort and um the important thing is um, the dilemma most islamic schools are living in for convincing parents to pay the tuition and at the same time um, uh, affording to pay the salaries for students. So uh, in my school, um, 
they want all teachers to go live following the same schedule and um, we need for this this is like a big problem problem because we have to consider how many families how many children they have number of computers available uh, nets uh, the internet uh, loads they have because some for one parent i know she has like eight students in the same school so and she doesn't have enough computers to have all the children um, uh, be on the computers at the same time so she would have to be selective plus for younger kids the number of hours they stay on the computer using the computer the, the, I don't think eight hours is like ideal for them um, and plus some of the teachers they actually panic giving live sessions at uh, at home where they have smaller kids oh we're cut Mr. Manel? Yeah, so we're there. We're still there. I thought it's yes. over. Yeah. I, so, we, yeah. We are over our six o'clock time though, so I want to um, want to be able to close inshallah. Yeah, so the last thing that um, I was saying, like uh, some of the teachers, um, they panic for going live all the time, particularly that they have younger kids and uh, they know this will, will, will not be uh, efficient for them or look professional. Uh, so, so many things we have to consider. We will be going live tomorrow and um, we're learning from our experiences and your experiences, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. Jazakumullah khairan, uh, Sister Manal and Sister Afifa and everybody else who has shared um, their ideas. Uh, we will have a recording of this and I'm going to, I'm looking at Sister Shaza, but though she doesn't know I'm looking at her, I'm looking at Sister oh, yeah. Shaza because inshallah this will be shared where? on our website yeah inshallah inshallah um we will see i've got a lot to learn too we will <laughs> add it to our website um give us a few days to do that and inshallah that will be there um you guys are always welcome to uh put the email list it's a discussion group um we used to call it a listserv back in the day those of you who are younger might not know what that is but it's basically a discussion email group um, and it is just teeming, thriving with lots of suggestions, questions, um, people you've heard from right now and many, many more, um, over 850 educators from around the United States and Canada um, that are going through the same thing as, as Sister Manal mentioned, you know, from Canada even. Um, we're all going through this together. And so that's a great resource and a great, great place to continue the conversation. Also, um, please guys, um, you know, email me at info at the isla.org um, to let me know what else you guys are interested in, what else you need. Um, we are here to serve you all and inshallah, do the best that we can to support you through this really difficult um, time, inshallah. And I wanna say in closing, while there are certainly a lot of problems that we are worried about, financial, academic, teachers, children, sickness, disease, please remember, that the hadith of the prophet, um, I know there's so many shuch have spoken about it, which is when you go through a plague, this is a time of punishment, but it also could be a, a, a way um, for a great blessing for Muslims. And so we have to have faith. And as long as we can have patience and sabr, inshallah, we will get through this, inshallah, and it will be better for it, inshallah. So I want us all to remember that we're just problem solving, but at the same time, we have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that there is wisdom behind everything that he does. And khaira fi mukhtarahullah, there's always blessing in anything that happens, inshallah. Please do share your questions um, on the IECN, um, on Facebook as well. We have an IECN on Facebook as well as through email. Um, and we will hopefully have more of these sessions. Jazakallah khairan for everybody for joining us. Um, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Brother Wadud, for leading us through the mindfulness. Inshallah, we will ask um, to join again soon so that we can do some more of that. Thank you.